Right, we're sitting here with Blake from Huntress, and this is the first interview for Matters. So, you're our first one. Oh, <laughs> first one ever. Right on it. Okay. Honor. So, how's the tournament so far? Killer. Next question. Next question. <laughs> um, what kind of guitarists and different bands do you play? Um, a lot. You know, uh, I was just talking to Will Palmer here from Iron Fist magazine about probably my all-time favorite is Uli Ra from Scorpions. Uh, the old 70s Scorpions, he's just a wizard. But that goes all the way through, like, to Eddie, he was one of my all-time heroes. And as far as, like, songwriting goes as guitar players, that's a whole other question, not just technical and solo virtuosity, but, like, bands like Thin Lizzy and Judas Priest that, like, write songs with catchy riffs, that's... So very kind of 70, 70 rock. Yeah, but at the same time, like, you know, I, I've been influenced by a lot of, like, thrash and black metal and, like, uh, you know, even the Gothenburg stuff is just undeniable, you know? Okay. Um, what's been your proudest achievement since forming the band? So I know you're quite a, like a young band. Yeah, three years going. Um, proudest achievement, a single one, is it's probably impossible to say, but just most of these tourings and, and getting this last record accomplished in, like, the time frame that we did and like something that we're also unanimously proud of, mm -hmm. you know, was a pretty huge accomplishment. But so was standing side stage while dancing was playing mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Could you give us a quick brief history of the band and maybe who you've enjoyed the time with most? Um, well, yeah, well, uh, Ian and I played in a band called Professor, and Jill had booked the band at a nightclub that she was doing. and. Uh, she just really, really liked the band. I'll never forget playing and having this like good, like good-looking blonde that did not look like she'd be a, a total metal fan, just like front and center, just like what all about it. And so, uh, pretty much from that point, she was just like, I don't want that. And the long story short, she ended up singing for the band, and then it just kept molding and working out until it's to, to this point, and it's gonna keep molding and transforming <laughs> until the next time I see you. <laughs> Um, Starbound based and Spell Eater are part of a trilogy. Can you describe which what each one represents and where the next one will go with that? Yeah. Um, you know, Jill's describing this trilogy as the three phases of the triple goddess, the maiden, mother, and crone. Um, but, you know, that plays a lot into the lyrical themes and, and spiritual themes that she is really the most responsible for. Um, at the end of the day, uh, it's four dudes getting stoned and hashing out riffs together in a practice space for hours at a time and getting inspired by whatever uh, it is at the moment, you know? But, like, you know, Joe really pictures this trilogy as, like, uh, the mother, or the, the maiden phase being young and aggressive and the mother phase being more nurturing and caring and, uh, you know, more of a atmospheric vibe and then the third one is the death of an old bitch so it's gonna be kind of pissed about it. Oh, be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was writing the recording process like for the start of it? Was it quick? Is it, you know, how easy was it? Yeah, it was, it was wild, you know. For the first record we had all this time, we wrote that record two or three times. Carl joined the band before we recorded that and we re-transformed everything into something that was actually a uh, viable quality, you know, and, and so it had been overthought and had a lot of cooks in the kitchen on it over the over the time. So the second record, we were like, we got no time, we got to do this fast. Um, and it didn't feel rushed. It just felt like we got to sit down and see ideas out from a uh, a to z, and it just like created good feeling songs, way more organic and natural, not so overthought, you know. Okay. Um. As I said, you're a pretty new band, um, and your visuals and your themes are very distinctive. Like, I've not seen really any other theme, theme on front of metal bands doing what you're doing at the moment. Um, was this like a conscious effort, or did it just go, no, was it just you just done it and that was it kind of thing? Because I know some people overthink, like to overthink things. Yeah, you know, it's, it's tough uh, to, to find that right balance, you know, but we do, we are pretty conscious of, of our decisions, you know. And, uh, we'd all played in bands for a long time, and we'd swung, swung, swung the bat, and 
struck out a million times until we were like, okay, I think we get it now. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, the visuals is, is important. We've always invested a lot of time and energy into the art for the album and, and correlating those images with the videos and doing real videos that are like directed and thematic and, and something watchable and because that's a piece of art also, you know, it doesn't just have to be five dudes in a jam room getting their music video done real quick because they need a video on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's part of the art of what we're doing and part of the image we're displaying and how we present ourselves. So you can't just half ass it, you know? Yeah. So we've really fought and gone above and beyond to maintain that. So, mm-hmm. you know? um, would you also consider your music as like very art or art as cathartic? Cathartic? Yeah, so like, um, Maybe some of your emotions and your uh, feelings, or maybe some of the things you enjoy doing, comes out in your playing. Or I mean, that's how you you hope it should be. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it should be inspired by the way you feel and communicating that, so that you're really hoping to identify with the way other people feel. You know, because you're assuming you're not the only one who does. Mm-hmm. You know, and. Uh, and for sure, you know, when the songs are written and when you're spending that kind of time uh, in front of a computer or just sitting at a desk or, you know, with your amp or your headphones or whatever, like, you know, the, that I feel like we have a pretty big dynamic range in our record between really slow and heavy and, and dark stuff to, to fast, you know, and you ain't writing a, you ain't writing a crash song when you're just super bummed out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, your imagery and lyrics have a very sort of pagan witchcraft thing to it, um, and some some first impressions. Some people might take that as a bit sec- highly sexual and provocative. Um, can you explain the reasons behind doing that? Uh, you know, it's, as far as the lyrical themes and stuff like that, you know, that's that's a lot all based in Jill's. Uh, you know, beliefs and spirituality and her upbringing and her experiences. Uh, and she's a she's a real world trippy person when it gets down to all that stuff, you know. Um, but as far as the provocativeness, you know, it's so funny. It wasn't such a conscious decision. It was like, uh, and I'll never forget seeing the Eight of Swords video, uh, the first cut, and being like, Jesus, it didn't look like that in person. <laughs> or maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention. Um, but it's like, you know, she's got it, use it. And like, I, I really think in the entire span of like, what we've done and accomplished, it hasn't been that provocative, you know? But it's like, we're all about fucking superheroes and like awesome shit like that. And superheroes don't wear a lot of shit. And if I was all buff into the singer and we we're like, man of war, I'd put on a loincloth and be like, sucky. <laughs> um, what are the plans for taking those samples in? Um, we're going to go home and we're going to sit around and bang our heads against the wall until we come up with another record. Um, if you could be remembered for one thing in Huntress, what would that be? Or be oh, Huntress be remembered for? Oh, I thought you said I could be a member of Huntress, who would that be? <laughs> and I was going to definitely say Carl. Yeah. <laughs> that <not controversial>. <laughs> <laughs> you can get another member of your band. <laughs> you should use that one. Uh, but what would you ask me again? Uh, what do you want Huntress to remember for? Remember for? Yeah. Then we have armadillos in our trousers. The headline? Yeah. <laughs> um, finally, just like a quick question away from music. Um, what would be your favourite aspects of, say, British culture? Like, if you had a favourite TV program or, uh, like, fish and chips or cup of tea, you know, everything you can think of when you think of Britain, what would be? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I mean, Fish and chips is way at the top of the list, and I completely blew it on this trip. Because we were in Southampton, which is apparently like the spot to be for good fish and chips, because you're on the coast. But I didn't get it until we got up to Newcastle, which is about as far north as you guys go. <laughs> uh, but you guys are uh, a wild bunch. You know that? Mm. The food it has been pretty rough. Y'all, the, like, if the, um, the, the kebabs, you know, kebabs? Yeah, kebabs. Something's missing over here. Yeah. You know, you go, just even over, in, you go over to Germany and the other side, it's, it's a whole other ball game. But, you got some good curries. Yeah, I think, um, Britain, I don't know if you've been to 
been to there for curries. Brick lane. Brick lane, yeah, it's like um, a street where they literally just have like curry shop, curry shop, curry shop. And it's just so nice. I think Rob Flynn's like a massive fan. Oh, yeah. Just walking up and down there and trying everything in there. So it's maybe quite nice. Right on, so, okay. um, we opened up some questions to the Facebook followers. Um, Emma Halton asked, what does it feel like to see your fans singing back your songs? <laughs> That's actually a really, really wild experience. Um, and it, I'll never forget, like, the first time we were out, it was even, um, it, might, it must have been on the Mayhem Festival over the summer. And because our record had just came come out, you know, and so we're going out there and we're we were try, going on a whim. We we're playing a lot of songs off our new record that just came out, more than bands traditionally do, you know, and like within the first day or two of the record, I mean, people are out there knowing the lyrics to the, not even the singles on the on the album, and it was just completely like it's just mind blowing. It's so it's, I don't know, it's really inspiring, you know. Cool. And um, finally, from Ben Gilly, who do you think is the greatest hunter? <laughs> uh, that's, this goes back to Carl, I think. You know, just because I want to be inside of his bot. <laughs> that sounded weird. It's the obvious. <laughs> the, the obvious. Sounds like he might be a killer or something like that. Oh, yeah. Or something like that. So. Oh, oh, you're thinking like a movie. Yeah. Oh. Terminator. <laughs> yeah, he's got a good point. T2000. He's, he's sick. He's, you have to melt him. <laughs> what about Hunter, the TV show from the 80s? I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. It was a good show. <laughs> yeah, T2000 was a bad mother. Cool. Right, that's it. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you.